Hello everyone and welcome back to Zachary Educational Channel. So in this video, we are going to know the very frequently asked and most important concept coming in the Environmental Science Entrance Examination, specifically for the UGC NET, in the point-wise note format. Yes, you should get ready with your notes so that you can write down these concepts. So without much delay, let's start today's video. So we'll start with the question where two statements were given so nowadays these questions are coming where two statements are given and you have to select which are correct or false so the statement one was increasing the productivity of the forest to meet the essential needs is one of the major objectives of the national forest policy 1988 so ye jo hai national forest policy 1988 ki baat kar rahe hain and the statement one was like that statement two stated according to the national forest policy of 1988 no forest based enterprise should provide employment to a local people on a priority basis so this was all about the national forest policy and first of all let us know what is this policy because this is definitely going to come in the next examinations we should know all these things and get ready for the examination so first thing is the first national forest policy in the independent india took effect in the year 1952 so you should write down all these things with the second edition which came in the year 1988 so pehle 1952 mein hua tha then 1982 1988 was the second edition next is the main theme of this policy of 1988 is protection conservation and development of the forest so these three are the main themes that is protection conservation and development of forest नेक्स्ट वील नो द साइलेंट फीचर्स एंड गोल्स ऑफ दिस नेशनल फॉरेस्ट पॉलिसी ये बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट है आई एम रिपीटिंग राइट डाउन ऑल दिस थिंग्स फर्स्ट इज टू मेंटेन द एनवायरमेंटल स्टेबिलिटी थ्रू प्रिजर्वेशन एंड रिस्टोरेशन ऑफ द इकोलॉजिकल बैलेंस सेकेंड फीचर इज टू कंजर्व द नेचुरल हेरिटेज विच इज एग्जिस्टिंग नेक्स्ट इज चेकिंग सॉइल इरोजन एंड डिनडेशन इन द कैचमेंट एरियाज ऑफ द रिवर्स लेक्स एंड द रिजर्वर्स Next point is checking the extent of of uh, sand dunes in the desert areas of Rajasthan and along coastal tracts. Next point that is the silent feature is substantially increasing the forest or tree cover through afforestation process and social forestry for process. Next is taking steps to meet requirements of fuel, wood, fodder, minor forest produces, soil and timber for the rural and tribal population. So it is specially for the rural and tribal population. Mark these things. Next is increasing the productivity of forest to meet the national needs. And next is encouraging efficient utilization of the forest produce or forest product and optimum use of the wood that is timber. And finally, generation of the work opportunities and involving the women. So here, as you can see here, it is mentioned that here you have to maintain the work opportunities. You have to generate the work opportunities for the locals. And next thing is increasing the productivity of forest to meet the national needs. So the question was asking about these two things only. Yes, the statement one was telling that increasing the forest productivity to meet the essential need is one of the major objectives. So it is correct. Next statement was no need of forest based enterprise should provide employment. So forest based enterprise should not provide employment. It is totally wrong. It should provide employment for the local people as well as the women. So statement one is correct and statement two is absolutely false. so here it will be option number 3 statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is false so you should write down all these things by pausing the video I remind you about the four mock test series which will provide a solid revision for the ugc net environmental science paper so this quality mock test as per the latest syllabus is available for just rupees 199 yes two simple steps to avail this mock test you have to pay rupees 199 to this number 88950 and send me the screenshot and then i will provide you the links for the all four mock test which soils are reddish that is the reddish in color they are clay rich and acidic soils characterized by humus rich surface horizon so in this question i'll wait for certain seconds to think and here I hope you have got the answer. The answer will be alti soils are the kind of soils which are reddish, clay rich, and acidic soils characterized by the surface horizon rich in high humus content. And it is one of the frequently asked questions: the types of soils and their characterization, the description. So I have provided this table here so that it will be easier for you to know. And I will tell the important points kindly note down. Very very important. Starting with the histo soils. So histo soils are also called as tissue or organic soils next is anti soils 
so anti soils they are their origin is from the recent soils without pedogenic developed horizons pedogenesis that is the development of soil so these are the recent soil that is anti soils next is incepti soils which are the beginning of the soil the development of soil horizon next is the nd soils nd soils are the soils kind which are high in volcanic ash content very very important nd soils high in volcanic ash content arid soil arid soil coming from the word arid arid region means water deficient so they are dried soil for more than 6 months of the year arid soils next are the molly soils molly soils are the soft soils organic rich surface horizons next is verti soils verti soils are turn self swelling clays so it is the peculiar term given turn self swelling clays are called as verti soils next coming to the alfi soils so alfi the word alfi means aluminium and ferrous that is they are having the iron and aluminium content and the clay into the b horizon that is alfi soils next is spodo soils spodo soils are wood ash they are having the wood ash they are gray color in the e horizon next alti soils which we have discussed which is in the question highly leached clay content and acidic soil next is oxy soils this question has also asked in the ugc net exam and in any other environmental science examination so oxy soils are very highly oxidized so oxidized that's mean it is telling oxy soils throughout the profile the oxygen concentration is more that's why it is called as oxidized soil or oxy soils i hope you are able to note down this what is the correct increasing order of the falling rocks by the percent volume in the earth crust so this question was asked this igneous sedimentary and metamorphic rock what is the correct increasing order that is from the lower to higher value in the percentage volume in the earth crust so i'll wait for certain seconds then i'll reveal the answer so in this question i'll not reveal the answer first we will know the concept so the concept means we will know and go through this graph so this graph is telling that how much percentage is for which kind of rocks present in the earth crust so first we will see that sedimentary rocks consists of 8% that is constituting after that metamorphic rock they constitute 27% to the earth crust then it is the igneous rock which is divided into granite diorite and rhyolite and andesite category and one other category is igneous rock is gabbro and basalt so this category is having the 22% and the following are is of gabbro and basalt is having the 42% so around 64% is consisting for the igneous rocks so that is the maximum and followed by metamorphic and sedimentary rock is the least one so we will go back to the question here the least percentage by volume in the earth crust is by the sedimentary rocks that is number 1 then it is increased in the metamorphic rock then the highest percentage is by the igneous rock so b c a will be the correct sequence that means option number 4 will be the correct option the next question is coming up on your screen what is the correct sequence another sequence coming up correct sequence in the decreasing order of hardness among the following so the following rocks or categories are gypsum fluorite feldspar and topaz and you have to correctly select the option from the given options so here also i will not tell the answer first we'll go for the concept the concept is the hardness scale is used by the help of mohs scale of hardness yes mohs scale defines the hardness from 1 to 10 and talcum that is talc is having the softest part that is the soft one which is having the hardness scale of 1 followed by gypsum with 2 hardness scale calcite with 3 fluorite with 4 apatite 5 feldspar 6 quartz is having 7 topaz 8 corundum 9 and diamond is having the highest mohs hardness scale that is of Ten and in between gypsum and calcite, fingernail comes. That is in between two and three. And in between calcite and fluorite, that is three and four range. Copper coin comes and knife and glass comes under the apatite and feldspar in between them. And steel, which we are using, the hardness is coming in between six to seven of the Mohs hardness scale. So according to this scale, the gypsum is having the lowest scale. Here you can see here, and topaz is having the highest hardness in the Mohs scale. So here, what will be the option? So gypsum will be having the here it is asking about the decreasing order that means highest so highest will be topaz followed by feldspar fluorite and gypsum that means d c b a will be the correct decreasing order so here it will be option number 3 that will be having the correct option in the decreasing order of hardness according to the mohs scale so mohs scale is very important kindly make this table and remember this every time 
द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन वॉज बेसल कन्वेंसन वॉज डिजाइन टू हट सो दिस फोर ऑप्शन आर वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड ट्राई टू आंसर इट करेक्टली so here the correct option will be option number 4 this basel convention was designed to prevent the trans boundary movement of hazardous waste between the nations so we'll know everything about the basel convention because it is one of the frequent asked questions and everything will be dealt in this slide so first of all this convention is to control the movement of the hazardous waste from one nation to another and here you should know that it was adopted in the year 1989 by the conference of plenipotentiaries and here it came into force in 1982 but it was adopted in 1989 so you should note down all these things and this convention secretariat is situated in geneva switzerland and the non parties so we are not under this convention they cannot transport the hazardous waste to and from each other unless they are specially agreed by this convention and the member nation to the convention are required to have domestic legislation for both prevention and the punishment of the illegal trafficking of such hazardous waste so the nations which are the member on this convention they have to require a domestic legislation and they have to prevent and give punishment to the illegal trafficking of the hazardous waste between the nations next point you should note down that it ensures this convention ensures that the member nations control the generation those who are the member of this convention they should control their generation the storage the transportation treatment reuse recycling recovery and final disposal of the hazardous waste next important point is the conference of parties is a primary organ of the basel convention and is responsible to make decision about the operations of this convention it meets biennially so it is also important so every two years this conference of parties they meet for the basel convention so write down all these things because they will be very very important moving to the next question the next question which came in the 2020 examination was the match the following in which the list 1 was having the air pollutants and list 2 were the control techniques or equipments so we'll match one by one starting with the particulate matter 2.5 so they are effectively controlled with the help of electrostatic precipitator and the sulfur dioxide is controlled using the scrubber technique similarly the oxides of nitrogen are controlled using the selective catalytic reduction and the coarse particulate matter are reduced and they are controlled using the cyclone collector so these are important things the techniques also you should learn i'll provide the link of the video in which i have described these techniques in a brief manner so four statements were given and you had to find that which of the statement are correct so here let me read out each and every statements so if i am reading the statements then wrong statements will be inside your mind so i will tell which are the two correct statements so that you will be not confused so the correct statements will be a and b so here option number 1 will be correct the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of a statistics is known as its standard error so note down these things and next correct statement will be option number b that is the precision of the sample estimate of some population parameter is the reciprocal that is 1 by that thing of the standard error that is 1 by standard error reciprocal error of the sampling distribution of the estimate now two statements were wrong and these are also important to know that is type 1 error in hypothesis testing occurs when we accept a wrong null hypothesis it is wrong because type 1 error in hypothesis testing occurs when we reject a true null hypothesis so type 1 error will be linked with this statement and similarly type 2 error in hypothesis that is here testing occurs when we accept a wrong null hypothesis so type 2 will be linked to this statement so these two things also are very frequently asked kindly note down all these things which of the following does not fall under the major goals of the national mission for green india so before knowing the answer you should know that what is national mission for green india and what are the goals because it is also important and frequently asked so you will know in the next slide first of all what is green india mission so this green india mission is also called as national mission for a green india and it is one of the eight mission india's action plans to address that climate change and it was launched in the year february 2014 for protecting restoring and enhancing india's diminishing forest cover and responding to climate change by a combination of adaptation and mitigation measures so here you should know it is one of the eight mission under the climate change action plan of india launched in the year 2014 to restore enhance and protect the diminishing forest cover in india
सो द मिशन रिकोगनाइज द इन्फ्लुएंसिस फॉरेस्ट हैज ऑन द एनवायरमेंट एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज मिटिगेशन वाटर सिक्योरिटी फूड सिक्योरिटी बायोडाइवर्सिटी कंजर्वेशन एंड लाइवलीहुड सिक्योरिटी ऑफ फॉरेस्ट लिविंग एज वेल एज डिपेंडेंट कम्युनिटीज सो लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड टू नो द पॉइंट वाइज ग्रीन इंडिया मिशन गोज दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट यू शुड नोट डाउन ऑल दिस थिंग्स first thing is the green india mission first goal is to increase the forest cover on 5 million hectares of forest or non forest land second goal is to improve the quality of forest cover on another 5 million hectares third is improve the ecosystem services including the biodiversity hydrological services provisioning of fuel fodder timber and non timber forest product so ntf is means non timber forest products so apart from timber what are the products from forest next point the goal is forest based livelihood income of about 3 million household it should generate this is the goal for the green india mission and the finally to enhance the annual carbon dioxide sequestration by 50 to 60 million tons by the year 2020 so these are the important mission or goals under the green india and now we will move back to our questions to answer the correct option so here it was asking that which is not falling under the you should mark that it is mentioned not under the major goals of the national mission for green india first is to increase the forest or tree cover to the extent of 5 million hectare it is absolutely correct next is to improve or enhance the ecosystem services like carbon sequestration storage and hydrological services and biodiversity it is also correct coming under the national mission for green india third is to increase the forest based livelihood income of about 3 million households it is also correct and the fourth point was given as to study the traditional knowledge systems for the community participation in adaptation and mitigation strategy so it is not mentioned in the national mission for green india goals so it will be incorrect so it is not under the category of national mission for green india that is to study the traditional knowledge so i hope you have learned something new don't forget to subscribe our channel zaclit for further updates you can join our telegram page if you haven't joined till now for the daily quizzes and prepare more efficiently so see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and believe in yourself